Uh, Coach, thanks for joining us on the call today. If you would take a minute to uh, give us your thoughts on the preseason uh, and on the opening game with James Madison, please. Yes, we've had a lot of additions uh, uh, to our football program, whether it be coaches or our players. And, and, and you know, our, our number one goal this all season was to make sure that team chemistry was our, our objective. And uh, we've done a, just a, a fantastic job. I think our coaches and players both done a good job of really coming together and gelling as a football team. Uh, and uh, we, we, we're just really happy to get this season started. We'll take questions for Coach Montgomery, please. Just hit star one on your telephone keypad to join the queue, then the operator will introduce you. And we'll go to Dan Totoro with wakeupcalledit.com. Good morning, Coach. How are you? Hey, Dan. How are you, man? Doing well. Uh, to take a look at, obviously, the success of the East Carolina wide receivers over the past few seasons, and obviously Zay Jones most recently, just what you can say coming through fall camp, some of those receivers that, you know, you have anticipation of, of stepping up and kind of carrying the torch into this season as, as some of those high targets for you. Yeah, we really think that, that Jimmy Williams is about to have just a monster year. And, and Davon Grayson, we have him back with the program now. And Quay Johnson, it, it was really consistent consistent for us last year. And uh, he, he's back as well. And, and then we also get to add, you know, some, some young talent. But Trayvon Brown hopefully will be completely medically cleared uh, here in a couple of days. So all those guys, you know, kind of combined, we, we think they're going to have uh, big years. But we're, we're really excited about Jimmy and Davon. And then as far as the, the quarterback position through camp, just what you can say you took away most from that cutting into the season, knowing that, you know, the guy under center that's going to be targeting each of these gentlemen as you move forward into this season and, and obviously look to expand on what you've done throughout the spring. Who are the guys in the fall that stood out as far as your, your quarterback battle that you had? Well, it was highly competitive. Uh, you know, we had two guys that just really battled day for day. Uh, Thomas Sirk and Gardner Minshew. Uh, Gardner uh, ended up getting the nod uh, in the end. Uh, I was really impressed with his accuracy, his ability to run uh, our system, and also uh, his ability to know his personnel. Uh, with Thomas, we also thought that the same attributes that, that Gardner had, uh, he had. He just was not in the system quite as long. Uh, and, I, and I think that, that you know both of those guys – elevated their play because of each other. So the competitive nature that we had uh, at the quarterback was something that we didn't have last year. And because of it, every single day, you had to come out and take care of the ball and, and not make silly mistakes with the football and go where the ball needs to go. But also know your personnel down the field, uh, know your backside of the backfield, understanding everything that goes with the slot and reading uh, with the quarterback. And I thought both of them uh, did a really good job, but, but Gardner got the nine. And a quick follow-up, do you anticipate – that Thomas Sir could still find his place onto the field this year. You know, we'll we'll kind of we'll we'll kind of you know they'll play that by ear, and and as it comes up, there may be a situation, uh, there may be a lot of situations, there may be uh, you know uh, a lot of different things that that happen throughout the year, and uh, but we'll kind of play that by ear. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. We'll go next to Greg Maria with the Daily News Record. Hey, Scotty, uh, as you prepare for, for JMU, I, I'm, I'm kind of just wondering your opinion is kind of what's the best way to, to try to stop what they do offensively uh, as they have, the, you know, the multiple running backs and then, of course, the quarterback, Brian Shores, back. In your opinion, do you have to kind of pick one or the other to, to play the run or do you to defend the pass? What's your opinion there? Yeah, I don't think that, you know, I don't think that, you know, you say you pick one or the other. The, the best player on the team, uh, on their offensive team, is, is is a quarterback. There's no question about it. Sure, it's just a all-around great player. Uh, I think his ability in the run game to, to pull it and, and go get yards and also his run action ability when he's throwing the ball, he stays in his face a little bit longer because of how quick his release is. So we've got our – you know, we, we, we've got a huge, huge challenge with him. Uh, I like the way the offense runs, though. They use 11 personnel. Tight end is, is very involved in what they do, which gives the quarterback some, some strength on the edge when he needs to throw it. And also they can split him out. Uh, with, with so many talented running backs, whether it be Johnson coming back healthy now or Sharp or Marshall, uh, with all those guys they can throw at you, they they got some talent and some experience there, power six talent. And uh, they've done a really really good job of, of trying to make sure that the people that they bring into the program are very helpful. So offensively, they've been boosted in a lot of ways. Uh, we, we've got a we've got a, a hard task. And then and then just to, to kind of follow up, does 
does preparing for, for an opener for, for you differ at all as, as kind of compared to what you do during the, the course of a regular season as, as kind of the year evolves and the fact that while you may have all the tape for, from their games last year, but, you know, when you show up, they, they could, you know, throw something different out just in terms of tweaks or, or whatever they may do to, to, the, to the scheme. Does, does it differ at all for you preparing for an opener? Yeah, well, the first thing with opener, you get more time. Uh, uh, you get you get a lot more time uh, in a normal week. Though, what you do is in, after the opener, you you get more recent uh, tape, which can 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 focus you a little bit more, dial you in about what they've been working uh, on. Uh, so those are the two, you know, those are the things that you you, you really see. And and uh, with with the opener, though, you've, we've been preparing for JMU for a, a while now, and then we've you know you get to, you get to have as many weeks as you want, basically getting prepared in in camp for them is whatever you choose to do. So we've, we've chose to, to spend a lot of time uh, on GMU and get ready for their attack offensively, defensively, and special teams. Uh, so just the, the biggest deal is the amount of, uh, the amount of time that you can spend off of last year, but also in your mind, you got to have the ability to be flexible because um, they were the national champions last year and we know that they've gotten better. Uh, so th- those are the things that we, we, that differ from, from opening week to week two. Got it. Thank you. We'll go next to Ronnie Woodward with the Greenfield Daily Reflector. Hey, Scotty, how you doing? Doing well. How are you? Pretty good, pretty good. Uh, you touched on it there a little bit, but now that we've hit game week, I mean, does this matchup feel a little different than your your classic kind of FCS matchup because they did just win a national champion, you know, national championship, and they, you know, are number one in the country at, at that level? Does this feel a little different than maybe like a Western Carolina, another team at, at that level? I mean, you know, we don't we don't classify guys when we're getting ready to play them. Uh, all we do is turn on the tape, and it feels like we're playing uh, the talent level of a, a conference game. There's no question about it. And uh, the way that they're coached, uh, that elevates uh, it even, you know, to a higher point. So uh, it, I guess, you know, some people might say that, you know, you feel a little different, but we, we watch the tape. And what the tape has, it shows there's, there's, there's visual evidence that this is a great football team, not a good team, but a great football team. Uh, so we, we just look at the tape. We, we really don't, you know, live with labels or titles or anything. We know that we got a big-time football team rolling in here, uh, and uh, we know that it's going to be a really, really uh, good football game. Okay, something a little different, too. Some of the coaches here have talked about Houston and obviously what's going on with the hurricane in, in Texas. Um, ECU and here in Greenville went through that, you know, similar situation with Hurricane Matthew. Do you have anything to add there or any kind of advice or something that you could give to a Houston coach and a, a team that's kind of battling through that now? You know, it's tough. You know, you, you just can't be prepared for those situations. And, and I, I really think that what we did here, uh, you know, the community came together. Our kids helped in the community. And, um, you know, it's hard to it's hard to give anybody any advice on it because I don't think there's a right or wrong way to go about it. But what you do understand is that these kids are impacted heavily by what happens over a one-week, two-week period. I mean, we had to displace kids. We had to move kids out, move them back into their places. Their parents were were separated away from them. So when parents can't get to their kids, there's a lot of angst that goes with it. So, you know, at the end of the day, it's all about patience and, and family. And I'm, I'm sure that, that Houston and, and Coach will do a good job. And everyone down there in that area, you just pray for each other. and We'll pray for you as well. And, uh, just, you know, the kids are it, – it is it is a big experience for the kids. I mean, and that's what you have to understand. It's bigger than football. It's bigger than school. These are these kids' lives. Okay. Thanks, Scotty. Coach, thanks so much for the time today. Look forward to hearing from you again next Monday.